Coming up on this week's show, Brandlin is here and she's got some audiobook recommendations for us. This is the Big Gay Fiction Podcast, the show for avid readers and passionate fans of gay romance fiction. Each week, we bring you exclusive author interviews, book recommendations, and explore the latest in gay pop culture. Welcome to episode 181 of the Big Gay Fiction Podcast. I'm Jeff from jeffadamswrites.com, and with me as always is my co-host and husband, Will Knaus. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This episode of the podcast is brought to you in part by our remarkable community on Patreon. A big thanks to Angela for joining us. We'll have more information on how you can join all of them at the end of the show, along with a sneak peek of what we have coming up for you next week. So you will not want to miss that. How are you, sir? I am fine. <laughs> Just was, fine. It was very declar- declarative of you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, I had... It was a busy, busy week. I traveled this week. Uh, I went to New York and, well, the East Coast, actually, in general, for for work this week. And managed to get a couple shows in, which I'm actually going to talk about in a few minutes. Uh, I was on a plane last Monday morning in which there was no Wi-Fi. And you have no idea how grumpy this can make business folk at 9 a.m. on a Monday morning when they're on a plane and they are told that there is no (laughs) Wi-Fi. I found this to be a tremendous thing because it gave me time because I couldn't do hardly anything for work because, you know, it all lives in the cloud. Uh, I I plotted five books instead because I did have my notebook with me. Uh, So I got some high level plotting done as I crossed the country, which needed to happen anyway. And so now it's done. And I am very happy about that. I'm happy as well. (laughs) Well, thank you for being happy about my plotting. Congratulations on all that plotting. That's a good thing. Yeah. And, and we have more congratulations to give. Uh, this past week, the Romance Writers of America announced their Rita Award nominations for this year. And several friends of the podcast and some other MM Romance uh, made the nominees. Uh, we've got Relay by Layla Rain, A Fool and His Manny by Amy Lane, Out of Body by Suzanne Brockman, which we just talked about on this show last week in mm-hmm. episode 180. Yeah. Uh, Loving a Warrior by Melanie Hansen and Lead Counsel by Aurora Ray uh, were all nominated. So congrats to them as well as all of the nominees for this year's Ritas. In the Hockey Player's Heart, the feel-good gay romance by Jeff Adams and Will Knaus, hockey star Caleb Carter returns to his hometown to recover from an injury. He never expects to run into his one-time crush at a grade school fundraiser. Seeing Aaron Price hits him hard, like being checked into the boards. The attraction is still there, even after all these years, and Caleb decides to make a play for the school teacher. You miss 100% of the shots you never take, right? Aaron has been burned by love before and can't imagine what a celebrity like Caleb could possibly see in a guy like him. Their differences are just too great. But as Aaron spends more time with Caleb, he begins to wonder if he might have what it takes to win the hockey player's heart. Get the Hockey Player's Heart in ebook, paperback, or as an audiobook performed by me, Finn Sterling, wherever you buy books. So I mentioned that while I was in New York, I caught two shows. And uh, it was interesting to discover that there were common themes here that I probably should have sorted out before I even saw them, but I didn't. Uh, the, there, the theme here is really teenagers looking for connections, looking to find their voice, being able to live authentic selves, and... Between these two shows, I was kind of an emotional mess for two days uh, because they both hit me pretty hard. Uh, started off with a return trip to Dear Evan Hansen, uh, so I knew that one was going to kind of punch me hard. Uh, we originally reviewed this uh, back in 20, 2017. Can you believe it's almost been two years? Back in episode 91. Uh, and I went back because, in particular, I wanted to see the young man now playing Evan, uh, 16-year-old Andrew Barth Feldman. Now, Andrew won the 2018 National High School Musical Theater Award and subsequently was invited to audition for the role. And within a few weeks, he was actually cast. And now, before this, the Evans were all in their mid-20s because this is not an easy part. The, the, the music's very difficult. You got to have a little bit of skill to, man- to manage Evans' emotional arc in this show. So Evans kind of a unicorn here in that he's 16, playing a 17-year-old. 
uh, in such a uh, highly difficult show. And I have to say that Andrew blew away any expectation I might have had uh, in the past. And I had a good idea that he could sing the songs, but there's, you know, singing a song on a video and then actually performing two and a half hours of a show where you're like, you know, losing your mind most of the time. Uh, his vocal performance was really through the roof. And I have to say that I like the way that they seem to have him doing the songs, whether it's personal choice or director's choice, I don't know. But there are so many emotional breaks in his voice early in the show. And then as he gets more emboldened by just the story as it unfolds, his his voice becomes stronger and stronger and stronger to by the time that he gets to his end of uh, the end of the first act with You Will Be Found, he's a whole different person and it's you can get it in his voice and then it all crashes down again uh, for Words Fail, which is the show's 11 o'clock kind of major show-stopping number. Uh, and if you're wondering why I'm not going too much into what this show's about, by the way, uh, it's because we did review it before. Uh, but just really quickly, it's you've got Evan who is suffers from anxiety and is in therapy and is supposed to write these letters every day. Dear Evan Hansen, today's going to be a great day and here's why. And on his first day back to school, his letter is uh, less than enthusiastic about why the year at all will be good. And this letter ends up in the hands of a young man who commits suicide shortly after that. And then this whole story kind of unfolds about how he must have been Evan's best friend and Circumstances get way out of Evan's control really quickly here, but that, that's my short little recap there. Anyway, back to Andrew. That acting was so spot on. Um, he at times could look like he wanted to shatter into a million little pieces to escape the moment. There's a scene in Act 2 where he ends up and has to reveal to his mom everything that's gone down. And it really, he's pressed so far into this couch, you think, he, you know he wants to disappear into that couch and just never come back. Uh, I can't wait to see what this young man does, frankly, even further in Evan Hansen. He's done interviews where he's still talking about kind of finding the role. And the producers are really giving him some time and space to figure that out. Like right now, he's only doing five shows a week instead of eight uh, as he kind of, you know, builds his stamina and gets into the role. So I look forward to seeing how he evolves in the role and even what he takes on after Evan um, as he continues to his acting career because he's amazing. And I think he'll be a, a leading man for years to come. So if you're in New York, uh, check out Dear Evan Hansen currently playing. Um, and it's on tour too. So if I, I highly recommend seeing it pretty much anywhere because it's an awesome show. The night after I did that, uh, I went to see a show called Bear, a pop opera uh, for its first performance in a limited engagement that's happening downtown. Now, I've been a serious fan of this show since the mid-2000s. Uh, it played off-Broadway in New York, and I don't even remember why now that we missed it while it was playing. Uh, but I saw clips of the show, ended up getting a cast recording that was done uh, for a studio cast that was put together. Uh, and I finally got the opportunity to see the show this week. It's being presented as a site-aware production in the St. John's Lutheran Church on Christopher Street, as part of the church's theater season that's actually paying tribute to the 50th anniversary of Stonewall, uh, which happens in June of this year. Uh, now, this show I will give you a brief synopsis of, and I, I took this directly from the production because it really sums up this show really well. Uh, Bear is a pop rock opera that follows a group of students at a Catholic boarding school as they grapple with their sexuality, identity, and the future. As the group attempts to put up a production of Romeo and Juliet, Tensions flare, self-doubt creeps in, and God's path blurs. The students' journeys ring with the sounds of youthful re repression and revolt. With an exhilarating sung-through pop opera score, bears a provocative and honest look at the dangers of bearing your soul and the consequence of continuing to hide. The core of this show are the characters of Peter and Jason. They're best friends, roommates, and lovers. Uh, Jason, however, can't quite embrace the fact that he's gay, because of the pressure from his parents, the pressure to be perfect, the pressure to follow Catholic doctrine. All of this just consumes him, and yet he cannot deny that he loves Peter. On the other side of that, Peter is tired of hiding and wants to be open about their relationship. Because it is the 21st century, after all. Jacob 
Jacob and Tinman and Jared Hopper were so stunning as Peter and Jason. Oh my God. <laughs> From their first song together, which is the second song in the show that inter- it was just mind blowing. And the emotionally charged songs as their relationship starts to fracture, uh, I really don't have the right words for them, but I could tell you that Jacob, uh, as he first figures out that Jason is really trying to leave him uh, with the song Ever After, as well as the role of a lifetime, were just stunning. And when the two come together to sing the title song in the second act, my heart was just ripped out and stomped on the floor at that point. Um, I got to give a big shout out to, to Noni Celine, who plays Sister Chant- Chantel in the show. She tore the house down twice Uh, in the second act when she tells Peter that God don't make no trash, trying to let him know that everything's going to be okay. Uh, She was tremendous. She also comes to Peter when he's in a drunken stupor and he envisions her as the Virgin Mary. And she sings to him a song called 911 Emergency. Uh, Just tremendous. I can't speak highly enough of this production. Uh, We ended up in back this as a Kickstarter. And even though we, and that was even when we weren't going to get to see it. And I'm so sorry you missed it (laughs) because you would have loved it too. Um, This is running at the church uh, through March 30th. So if you're in the area, I highly recommend you check this out and you can get information for that at bearinthechurch.com. And of course, we'll have it in the show notes as well. Well, a new season has sprung. Yes, it has. Uh, Spring has apparently just happened. I don't know what's going on where you live, but uh, spring has sprung here. And we thought we would discuss some books that are going to be coming out in the next six to eight weeks. Books that we are especially enthusiastic about and hope you will be as well. Mm -hmm. Now, a teeny tiny caveat before we get started. Um, uh, The publishing business is sometimes weird and complex (laughs) and the publication dates that we're going to be mentioning um so far are solid but uh sometimes publishing dates move uh they're a moving target um that's just how the biz works sometimes so um while you can certainly look forward to some of these books um just be aware uh dates are subject to change Uh, The first book I want to discuss uh, is coming up in the next week or so. It's called Arctic Sun by friend of the podcast, Annabeth Albert. And that is slated for release on April 1st. Here is the quick blurb. Uh, I think it's really good. And uh, we're going to talk about why we're uh, looking forward to this particular title. Everything's bigger in Alaska, especially the HEAs. Annabeth Albert kicks off her brand new Frozen Heart series with Arctic Sun, an opposites attract romance between a rugged former male model. Now that hasn't actually told us anything about what the book is is really about. It's really kind of setting the stage. Um, it's it's marketing speak to kind of help pull us in. Uh, and it's already mentioned several things that I'm <laughs> interested in. It's like opposite attract and, you know, it's, you know, a rugged outdoorsman in the middle of Alaska and a male model. It's like, ooh, this sounds good. So I'm looking forward to it. Okay. <laughs> Continuing on. <laughs> He's built a quiet life for himself in Alaska, but it doesn't stand a chance against the unrelenting pull of a man who's everything he shouldn't want. Ooh. Now, in the biz, that's probably, you know, essentially like a cover blurb. Um, now, as in the previous paragraph, it actually still hasn't told us anything about the story or the book itself, but this uh, second paragraph is more about the emotion. So if those tropes in paragraph one didn't pull, pull you in, uh, they're trying to like give you the, the heart of the story now. Now, let's continue with what the book is actually about. Ex-military mountain man Griffin Barrett likes his solitude. It keeps him from falling into old habits, bad habits. He's fought too hard for his sobriety to lose control now. However, his gig as a wildlife guide presents a new kind of temptation in super-hot supermodel River Vale. Nothing the Alaskan wilderness has to offer has ever called to Griffin so badly, and that can only lead to trouble. River has his own methods for coping. Chasing adventure means always moving forward. No one's ever made him want to stand still. 
until Griffin. The rugged bush pilot is the very best kind of distraction, but the emotions he stirs up in River feel anything but casual, and he's in no position to stay put. With temptation lurking in close quarters, keeping even a shred of distance is a challenge neither's willing to meet, and the closer Griffin gets to River, the easier it is to ignore every last reason he should run. I'm intrigued. You actually had me from the very first line you did with the everything's bigger in Alaska, especially the HEAs. I mean, I know that is 100% marketing speak, but ooh. Yeah. That's good. And boy, if there was ever a blurb that was tailored for you. Yeah, I know. It's like everything I love. It's right there. Annabeth, you wrote (laughs) the book for him, right? (laughs) Um, Yeah. Uh, Obviously, uh, I'm very much looking forward to this. Um, I haven't read a lot of, um, let's let's call them remote location romances. Um, as most of you probably already know, if you've listened to the show once or twice, I prefer my romances uh, contemporary, uh, and they usually either happen in the big city or small towns. Um, romances that happen in remote locations, whether it's... Uh, um, where there was the shipwreck romance from, um, I'm totally blanking on what it was called. Damn it. It was so good. Um, whether it's on like a deserted island or somewhere in the middle of the wilderness, I haven't really read a whole bunch of those just yet. So I'm really looking forward to the uniqueness of this particular location. Um, that blurb actually just hinted out one of my absolute favorite tropes, uh, forced proximity. Um, These two characters, these two opposites, are going to be forced to deal with one another uh, in close confines. Even though they obviously have all of Alaska around them, uh, they're (laughs) probably the only two people, you know, for many, many miles. So, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to this one an awful lot. So, Arctic Sun, the first book in the Frozen Hearts series from Annabeth Albert, is slated to come out April 1st. So the next one I want to talk about is LOL, or Laugh Out Loud. Um, It's the next book in the After Oscar series by Lucy Lennox and Molly Maddox. Uh, That is slated to come out on April 2nd. Now, a few weeks ago, we talked about the very first book in this series. Mm -hmm. Uh, Loved it to pieces. So I'm really, really looking forward to this second book. Um, I'm going to read the blurb here, uh, and this is a little bit different. It's actually written in first person. Oh. Um, The books themselves are written in alternating first-person point of view, Um, and so the blurb is written in that style, and what's um, kind of nice is that it gives you an idea of what the voice and the humor of the books is all about. So... I'm not going to like act or anything, but uh, Darn. this is this is first person <laughs> narration from the point of view of the two main characters. Um, Scotty, when a gorgeous cop comes racing out of a building on Fifth Avenue, hops into your horse drawn carriage and screams, go, you go. You don't stop and ask for paperwork or a badge or an explanation of who you're chasing. You simply followed his shouted orders and try not to kill anyone in the process. At least that's what I did when it happened to me. But then it turns out the cop is none other than Roman Burke, Hollywood's hottest star, and our little joyride gets me fired. Now I'm broke, my horse has been evicted from his barn, and I've got nowhere to turn. This is from Roman's point of view. When you accidentally hijack a Central Park carriage to escape the paparazzi, get pulled over by the police, and your crisis manager insists you lay low for a while, you nod your head and go. And when the cute carriage driver shows up on your front step, horse and toe, blaming you for losing his job, you agree to fix it, even if that means hauling both of both him and his horse along with you on your Vermont getaway. At least that's what I did when it happened to me. Unfortunately, trouble seems to stick to the sexy carriage driver like hot syrup on a hotter waffle, making my Vermont retreat anything but quiet. Now the carriage driver is in my bed, unexpected guests are crawling out of the woodwork, and the paparazzi is on my tail. With chaos and scandal swarming around me, suddenly, it isn't just my career on the line. It's my heart. Oh, <laughs> That sounds awesome. I mean... I know! Anything that starts with a, with a hijacked carriage and, <laughs> you know, Holly, Hollywood star and a, and a, I guess, 
a horse guy, for lack of a better term, for what um, he is, a carriage driver. Uh, yes. Scotty the carriage driver was actually a secondary character in the first book, IRL. Um, our two main characters uh, went on various romantic dates, and one of them was a carriage ride through Central Park, and Scotty was their driver. Uh, and he was uh, a, a, a little a little fun and a little too flirty with one of our heroes, which uh, brought up the hackles of our, our billionaire character. It was very, very amusing. Uh, so I'm very happy to see that Scotty is now getting his very own story. Uh, and I think this setup that was just detailed in this blurb uh, sounds absolutely hilarious. Um, and it brings, uh, it, it points out the sort of the, the humor and the lightness uh, and the kind of uh, wackiness that uh, can sometimes, um, oh, uh, that comes through all of the emotion in a Lucy Lennox, Molly Maddox book. Mm -hmm. um, I've said it before and I'll say it a million times. I think uh, what's uh, something that sets apart Lucy Lennox's style and why people love her so very, very much is that her emotions are very deep and very true and very real. And that's why people connect with her characters so much. Uh, and that's certainly very true in this new series that she's writing with her sister. Uh, but what's uh, slightly different is there's a little more lightness, a little more comedy uh, than you might expect in like one of her like Maid Marian books or you know anything else mm -hmm. so uh i'm super looking forward to book two in this brand new series i think it's going to be really good i need to get into that series because everything you've talked about with irl and now just the blurb for that one it's like i need to read those yeah lucy you're making books too fast <laughs> i can't keep up <laughs> The TBR is too big. Uh, and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep adding to them. The next book I want to talk about is called Under His Protection by Laquette. And that is slated to be released on April 16th. Here's the blurb. They can escape their enemies, but not the desire between them. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my, my interest is already peaked. Indeed. <laughs> Prosecutor Camden Warren is on the fast track to professional nirvana. With his charm, his sharp legal mind, and his father as chief judge in the highest court in New York, he can't fail. Nothing can derail his rise to the top until an attempt on his life forces him to accept the help of a man he walked out on five years ago. Wounded in the line of duty, Lieutenant Elijah Stevenson wants to ride his new desk job until retirement, not take a glorified babysitting gig with more risk than it's worth especially not protecting the entitled lawyer who disappeared after the best sex of their lives. The threat against Camden's life is real, but their passion for each other might prove the greatest danger they've yet to face. Da, da, da. <laughs> or if I could, I'd make a law and order sound. But that's bong, a little... Bong, bong. <laughs> All right, you gave it a go. <laughs> Braver than I was there. That pushes all my romantic suspense buttons, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, it's mm -hmm. got the bodyguard trope kind of going on, too. And, yeah, I'm, I'm jazzed to see this. This is coming out as part of the Dreamspun Desires line. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a nice, juicy romantic suspense category sort of thing. Yeah. When I saw the cover reveal, actually, um, probably almost a couple months ago now, I was like, hello, the cover is exceptional. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I read the blurb, I was like, oh yeah, I'm 100% on board with this. Um, bodyguard trope, everything. Uh, this sounds super good. This book also has a lot of uh, great buzz behind it. Um, some early readers are already championing it. And that's, I, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> shaking their pom-poms because this is apparently a <laughs> kick-ass book. I suggest everyone. I know I'm like, pfft, I'm going to crack the spine on this one the, the moment I receive it in the mail. Uh, Jeff and I, of course, subscribe to the Dream Stun Desires line. Uh, so, ooh, in the next couple of days, this should be arriving on our doorstep. Yeah, if all uh, goes well, it should arrive sometime this week. Yeah, so I can't wait to read Under His Protection by Laquette. Yeah. Now, if you thought Will was going to get to read all these, no, I actually get to read a few also of the books that I'm super excited about. And I'm going to kick off with Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. Uh, this just, this one kind of has me written all over it mm -hmm. um, to a huge degree. What happens when America's first son falls in love with the Prince of Wales? 
I don't really need to say any more than that, do I? <laughs> <laughs> it's got that royal thing that I like so much, and and the the even idea that a first anyone in a first family of this country could fall in love with, you know, a same sex partner is like ooh. Anyway, I'll read on. When his mother became president, Alex Claremont Diaz was promptly cast as the American equivalent of a young royal. Handsome, charismatic genius, his image is pure millennial marketing gold for the White House. There's only one problem. Alex has a beef with the actual prince, Henry, across the pond. And when the tabloids get hold of a photo involving an Alex and Henry altercation, U.S.-British relations take a turn for the worse. Heads of family, state, and other handlers devise a plan for damage control, staging a truce between the two rivals. When it fir- sorry, what at first begins as a fake, Instagrammable friendship grows deeper and more dangerous than either Alex or Henry could have imagined. Soon, Alex finds himself hurtling into a secret romance with a surprisingly unstuffy Henry that could derail the campaign and upend two nations. And begs the question, can love save the world after all? Where do we find the courage and the power to be the people we are meant to be? And how can we learn to let our true color shine through? Casey McQuinston's Red, White, and Royal Blue proves true love isn't always diplomatic. Now, first of all, that's an awesome blurb. <laughs> but so much here. I mean, royalty and, and yes, what would be akin to American royalty in the first family Sounds like there might be in maybe some romantic suspense lurking in there somewhere, depending on how some of this turns out. And of course, you also have an enemies to lovers kind of motif going through there since they're kind of snippy with each other at first. I can't wait for this book. This one's getting a little bit of advanced buzz as well. Um, so can't wait for this to come out. Uh, anything particularly you want to say before I just blow merrily on? Or No, this one caught my attention the moment it was announced as well. Yeah. Uh, this sounds so good. Uh, new adult romance usually isn't my thing, but uh, this is sort of like, you know, ticking all of my favorite genre boxes. I'm really looking forward to this yeah. book a lot. Red, White, and Royal Blue is due out on May 14th. Mm, sounds really good. Next up, and this one won't be a surprise to anybody who heard us gush about the first book, <laughs> uh, American Fairy Tale, which is the second in the Dreamer series from Adriana Herrera. Uh, we both adored uh, American Dreamer so hard, and we are very much looking forward to this one. Here's the blurb. Fairy tale endings don't just happen. They have to be fought for. New York City social worker Carmillo Santiago Briggs grew up surrounded by survivors who taught him to never rely on anything you didn't earn yourself. He's always dreamed of his own happily ever after, but he lives in the real world. Men who seem too good to be true usually are, and me who never, ever mixes business with pleasure, until the mysterious man he had an un forgettable hookup with turns out to be the wealthy donor behind his agency's new next level funding. Thomas Hughes built a billion-dollar business from nothing. He knows what he wants and isn't shy about going after it. When the enthralling stranger who blew his mind at a black-tie gala reappears, Tom's more than ready to be his Prince Charming. Showering Miho with the very best of everything is how Tom shows his affection. Trouble is, Miho's not interested in any of it. The only thing Miho wants is Tom. Fairy tale endings take work as well as love. For Miho, that means learning to let someone take care of him for a change and for tom it's figuring out that real love is the one thing you can't buy now miho is part of the uh friendship crew uh part of the supporting cast of characters uh that were actually a pretty significant part mm -hmm. of the first book in the dreamers series uh i i'm looking forward to all of their story Adriana, there better be. <laughs> there better be stories for all of those boys. I'm looking forward to them. I'm just going to say that right now. Um, so, yeah. I like, like you said, we adored this first book. And uh, I really like the, the setup that this blurb uh, is talking about. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's got some really interesting opportunities for love and romance and misunderstandings and Ugh, it's just so good. Yeah. So, so good. Can't wait. With everything that Adriana put into American Dreamers, 
I have no doubt that this one's just going to like exceed any expectation I could possibly have for it. So looking very forward to that. When's it out? May uh, 20th. Yeah. So check out American Fairy Tales coming out in the middle of May. So given my love of young adult, I would be remiss if I did not throw out a young adult title amongst all of these books that we're talking about. And uh, I am super duper excited for the third book in C.B. Lee's Sidekick series. And this one will be called Not Your Backup. Uh, here's a little sneak peek. Emma Robledo has a few more responsibilities than the usual high school senior. But then again, she and her friends have left school to lead a fractured resistance movement against a corrupt Heroes League of Heroes. Emma's the only member of a supercharged team without powers, and she isn't always taken seriously. A natural leader, Emma's determined to win this battle, and when that's done, get back to school. As the resistance moves to challenge the League, Emma realizes where her place in the fight is, and it's at the front. Mm. I know. Um... Emma's been there the whole time in the other two books, and she is definitely, she's not wrong when it's often said she's not taken seriously because she's the one without the powers. Mm. Um, and I can't wait to see how CB kind of really does move her to the front mm -hmm. uh, because she is she is more than she seems for sure. This series, I, everything she's done with it from its diverse cast and and the setting of these People who are superheroes but treated as sidekicks, but actually in some cases more powerful than the heroes that they aren't allowed to be. It's it's mind blowing. And this book, I've wanted this book since we met CB at the LA Times Book Fair last year, mm -hmm. when this was just on the horizon of, of what she was talking about. So super looking forward to that. This comes on June fourth. Now there's one more book that I'm going to throw out that I'm looking forward to, but I can't tell you much about it. Because it's, it's, it's been only uh, revealed, for the most part, in Layla Rain's, uh, Layla, Layla's Lush's Facebook group. She's starting a brand new series in June. Uh, we all know that I love her brand of romantic suspense. And the teases that she's been giving on this book have just blown my mind. So we ha all have to be on the lookout for Layla's new romantic suspense series coming in June. And that's really all I can mention about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I want it right now. <laughs> so hope everybody has enjoyed this look at books coming up in the, in, in the springtime. If you'd like a complete list of all of the books that we just talked about, all you have to do is go to the show notes page for this episode, episode 181, that is located on the interwebs at biggayfictionpodcast.com. Want to hang out with us between shows? Check us out on Facebook. You never know what we might post. News about book sales, bonus video content, and maybe even a live broadcast or two. Like us today at Facebook.com slash Big Gay Fiction Podcast and see what we get up to next. So Brandilyn's back with us this week to talk about a new audiobook from Morgan Bryce, as well as some old favorites she's been listening to. Very excited to welcome Brandilyn back to the show. Thanks so much for coming in. Good to be here. I know I haven't been here much because I have not been reading new stuff, but, but I have. Yes, you have. We we met up at Coastal Magic because you were there, and you got very attracted by Morgan Bryce's poster for Badlands, which yes. just came out on video, on video, yes. on audio. <laughs> yes, I sat there and I stared at it, and then I just happened to run into Miss Bryce, and we started talking about her books. I did not. She was she's a new to me author. Um, she's actually been around for a while. I've looked into some of her backlist her as Gail Z. Martin, mm -hmm. who is her mainstream uh, name. And uh, the Badlands books are it's paranormal mystery, which if you happen to remember not the last time I was on, maybe last time I was on, I talked about another uh, paranormal mystery series I was listening to. And so it's just kind of something I, I, I like a lot. Um, psychic and cop can't beat that. And so I was interested in the book and then I happened to notice it was coming out on audio this, and it came out on the 12th on audio. Yep. I pre-ordered it and it was either going to be 
awesome or I was going to be really disappointed because it's the first book in a while I've been excited about. And so um, it was, it's narrated by Cale Williams and he does a fabulous job. He, um, you know, just, as I've said before, he, he goes away and he just kind of becomes the characters and the uh, book itself is set in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So if you happen to be looking for a book set in South Carolina, because some people want that, um, the city itself becomes a character in itself. Um, you can tell that Miss Bryce has done quite a bit of research into the area and into the folklore of the area. Um, especially as you go on in the series, which I happen to have to grab the other two books that are currently out in the series and read them in ebook format because I just couldn't leave Simon and Vic behind. Um, and apparently her other, uh, LGBT series is, um, similar. I have not touched that one yet, but Badlands, uh, Morgan Bryce, uh, narrated by Kel Williams, and it's on audio. Book one and a half is coming out on audio. Actually, it will be out on audio shortly after this airs, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's the 29th. And then I spoke with Morgan, and she said book three, which is The Rising, is in the works in audio and should be out soon as well. Um, which I'll go back and re-listen to those once they're out. Um, yeah, we had her on the show right after Coastal, and she's got this whole interlocking universe between yes. Gail Z. Martin and Morgan Bryce, and and it's you can read them separate. Mm -hmm. um, there are characters that are mentioned in Badlands that, knowing that this is her second pen name, and knowing that she does have a lot of backlist. I went, they've got to be, you know, they have to have other backstory. And so I've actually started listening to her uh, Dangerous Curiosities series, which is one of her Gail Z. Martin series, um, because the main character there is mentioned in Badlands. And a couple, actually two of the characters there are mentioned in Badlands. And uh, it's, I'm not very far into it, but it's, so far, really, really good. And actually, that one has um, an LGBT, I, w I don't want to say main character, but like the main character's best friend. So he's there. His boyfriend is, is mentioned. I haven't gotten to meet the boyfriend yet. So it's kind of, it seems like a natural progression that she has written this LGBT-themed book because it's not, because Dangerous Curiosities is, Old, older, you know, a couple of years old. And so um, I wonder if, if we can talk her into giving us Teague's story. Anyway, that's <laughs> neither here nor there at this point. Well, um, who knows? From your voice, it goes right out to her, perhaps. And yeah, who knows? Or maybe, maybe she has given it to us and I just haven't found it. I don't know. That could be uh, too. So the anyway, it's uh, a psychic hooking up with a cop. Of course, you know, um, Simon's the psychic, Vic's the cop. And, of course, mur a murder investigation ensues that has paranormal elements. Um, it's a little bit of formula, but it's it's well written. And um, I like the characters a lot. So Morgan Bryce, Badlands. It's book one of currently three. Very cool. I'm glad that I'm glad it paid off for you because we talked yes. about that a lot while we were at Coastal. Yeah, like yes. Um, anyone who happened to have been at Coastal probably saw me tackling uh, you down and saying, "I want this. I want to talk about this book." Assuming I like it, and I <laughs> and you did. And now you're reading other stuff of of Gail uh, slash Morgan's. Yes, I did. I, I'm reading mainstream. You know, hey. I don't do that often. Um, and actually, before that one, like I said, I hadn't really l read or listened to anything new. I've been kind of re-listening to stuff. Um, I've been on a, a Jordanelle Hawk kick, as we, we discussed. Um, her Hexworld series and her uh, Wyborn and Griffin series. I 
her White Bone and Griffin series is the one she's known for, but it's a long series. So if you haven't listened to Jordan L. Hawk before, um, Hex World's a great one to start with. It's four books and two short stories on audio, narrated by Tristan James, who if you haven't listened to Tristan James, James, you need to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I it agree is with that. a witch and his familiar, a familiar being a shifter um, and magic and again investigation. The witch is a cop, and um, yeah, I've been on a paranormal mystery kick. Obviously, um, the other uh, books I've been re-listening to a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. It are uh, Reese Ford's uh, Kai Grayson series, the first two of which are on audio um, with Greg Tremblay. Another and great one. Y- you know me. I love Greg. Um, love Greg's narrations. And the third book, uh, Jack, Cat, Jack Cat Jive, just came out on ebook. So I'm, I have my fingers crossed that it'll be out in audio soon. Um, and so, yeah, it was Badlands. And then those two series have kind of been what I've been. I've actually re-listened to the Reese Ford ones a couple times in the last few months. They're kind of my go-tos because uh, Greg Tremblay's voice is, is very soothing to me. So I, it's one of them I, I look for. I'm like, I'm in a paranormal mood. I need Greg. The uh, Kai Grayson books are, are kind of go-tos for me. And you mentioned Tristan, and I know Tristan does the voice uh, for Reese's 415 Inc. books. Mm-hmm. And I've read those on ebook, and now because of Tristan, I kind of want to go back and catch those audios as well. Um, he, my first introduction to Tristan was actually uh, was another Reese Ford series, her Sinners Gin yeah. series. That was the first one I ever heard him do. Um, so... But, of course, he's done some fabulous series. He's done the Marshall series by Mary Calme. Um, there's a few others. But, yeah. Yeah, he, and he's awesome with it's romantic just, suspense kind of he, things. He has the perfect voice for it. As a matter of fact, um, he did an Ethan Stone, um, his first flesh book, Tristan James did, and... I had read that book 8 million times and I actually, I'm, I'm friends with Ethan and we were talking about who to get for that. Cause it's a romantic suspense. And I was like, well, if you can, Tristan James, cause he, he is, he, he just does romantic suspense. He's awesome at it. Yep. Um, so anyway, yep. So that's what I've been, been listening to. I've been actually using my uh, e-reader too more but you know it's like the dirty secret that sits over in the corner somewhere (laughs) we we won't talk about the e-reader well (laughs) because they keep coming out with new books in these series that i've you know listened to eight million times i'm like but but it gets to the point that i've listened to it enough that when i'm reading it i I hear the narrator's voice in my head so because i'm listening i'm uh currently reading the the 10th book in the uh, Wyborn and Griffin series just came out, Bellfire. So I'm slowly going through that one as I have time. And I have Julian G. Simmons' voice in my head because I just re-listened to the series. So. I totally relate to that. I had, uh, <laughs> I did a Layla Rain's last uh, in the uh, Trouble Brewing series. Isn't that another Tristan James? It is. It is. And anyway. I'd heard all of, the, uh, all of the Irish and Whiskey books and the first two books of trouble brewing I did on, I done them on audio, but I needed to read that third book cause I wanted to review it in time when it came mm-hmm. out. But I heard Tristan totally in my head <laughs> reading it to yeah. me. Yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't uh, done the second series cause I was waiting for them all to come out on audio, but I'll, smart I'll, choice. I'll get... And they're all out now. So they are all out now, but I'm in a paranormal mood. So I've got to wait till I get back into to non-paranormal so you'll get there you'll pivot back you always do i I, I always do i always do so all right well thank you so much for talking about morgan's badlands and and giving us a little insight on some jordan l hawk and reese ford too absolutely anytime we'll, we'll see you again in a in a few months down the road yes absolutely 
Thanks again to Brandilyn for hanging out with us. If you want to hear more from Morgan Bryce, you can always go back to episode 178, where she was our guest for our Coastal Magic recap. We talk about Badlands and her other books, including the upcoming audiobook that Brandilyn also mentioned. So yeah. you can check that out. Yeah. Okay, guys, I think that's going to do it for this week's show. Just a quick reminder before we leave you, uh, the Big Gate Fiction Podcast has its very own Patreon page. Now, Patreon is a way for fans to engage with all kinds of artists and writers and musicians and, you know, podcasters as well. It's a great way to support the kinds of creative content that you enjoy the most. And if you're curious about what kind of bonus material we deliver to our fans every single month, just go to patreon.com slash biggatefictionpodcast. Now, coming up next week, Erin McKellen joins us to talk about her new book, Clean Break. Yes, I got recommended this book. I've been, I'm almost done with it. And oh my God, it's just blowing my mind. Because um, <laughs> it it actually is deals with a few things that I would not normally pick up to read. Uh, but I've so enjoyed it. And I'll talk about all of that next week. So make sure to come back for that. Cool. Okay, guys. Remember, no matter where life takes you, the journey will always be sweeter when you have a book. Until next time, everyone, please keep turning those pages and keep reading. For detailed show notes and links to everything discussed in this episode, go to BigGayFictionPodcast.com. New episodes are available every Monday at all major podcast distributors. You can also find us on YouTube. I'm Derek McLean. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. <laughs>